De regreso aquí en Auto 060 y vamos a terminar el show de esta semana con una entrevista a Carl Bauer, responsable de la recabación de datos de, de KellyBlueBook.com, quien estuvo recientemente en Alemania antes de este viaje que hicimos en Kentucky para la presentación del Chrysler 200 2015. Y bueno, aprovechando que estuvo en Alemania y el grupo Volkswagen es tan importante y tiene tanto que, de qué informar, aproveché el momento para hablar de Carl Bauer sobre... Los planes que tiene el, el grupo Volkswagen, no solamente para Estados Unidos, sino para el resto del mundo. So we're switching back to English, so to talk to, listen to Carl Bauer about his uh, recent visit to Germany for the Volkswagen Group. So here with Carl Bauer from uh, KellyBlue.com, and uh, we just uh, offer uh, another test drive, which we cannot talk about for now. <laughs> But Carl has come back from a pretty interesting uh, trip in Germany visiting the Volkswagen Group. Right, Carl? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, Javier. I'm great to be on here talking with you. And uh, yeah, we just had an interesting time in Germany talking about uh, Volkswagen's future plans. Yeah, the future and the present, because I mean, they're doing a lot. Here in the States, they're struggling a lot. A bit, but some people might be surprised that Subaru sells more cars than Volkswagen in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Mazda, too. I mean, like, it's, it's uh, kind of strange, right? Yeah, they're the uh, number two automaker in the, on the planet right now. Uh, they're behind Toyota. But they just overtook General Motors in China, which is a good place to be doing well these days. And they're laying a lot of groundwork for future planning. And that's, I think, the important thing to keep in mind is that while they're, they're not doing great in the U.S. right now, it's because they're kind of redoing a lot of their model lineup. And what they're doing with the model lineup is making everything kind of conform to just a very small number of very basic platforms. And they're going to end up having a very cost-effective way of assembling cars across all of their brands. Don't forget that Volkswagen Group is made up of not just Volkswagen, but Bentley and Lamborghini and Porsche and Audi. Uh, they even have Ducati motorcycles now. They've got brands they don't sell in the U.S. Lamborghini. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Lamborghini is a huge brand. So uh, they, they, they basically are making a lot of money in premium vehicles right now. Uh, and they're making good money in, in China, and they were very profitable this past year, but they're looking to actually become more, even more cost-effective with this new modular kind of platform system. But as you can imagine, it's kind of like, you know, redoing your house. At some point, you have to not live in it so that you can have it redone, and that's kind of what's going on with a lot of their U.S. product. They're redoing these platforms, and within two to three years, you're going to see the fruits of the labor. But right now, for instance, they've got kind of out-of-date SUVs, then they need more updated yeah. SUVs for the U.S. market, and they know that. But they're going to—it's all part of a longer-term plan that they're in. Yeah, but uh, for the Volkswagen brand, that's the case. But for the Volkswagen Group, with, for example, the Porsche Macan, I mean, that's a, an, a new SUV that basically is going to double up their production numbers, which is amazing for a for a brand like Porsche that. I understand they make $25,000 every car they sell. It's incredible. Porsche, had, Porsche and Audi both had double-digit growth last year, and those are both you know niche premium brands. So that's impressive when you're having that kind of growth. They're making great profit off all those cars. And the McCann is a great example of how Uh, some of the brands are a little further along in that development time frame, and the McCann is a great example. It's it's going to be the first of many Porsches that are going to be based on this more kind of modular platform system, and they're going to use these what they call assembly kits. And that uh, that car, like you said, it's going to make Porsche a lot volume, of money. <laughs> volume sales are going to just go through the roof because that market is red hot right now. By the way, premium small SUVs is yeah. pretty much the hottest market right now. And uh, so what you were saying uh, uh, in, in what, what you were, were told in Germany during their visit is that, for example, to make it like sound a little bit simply, simpler, obviously it's not, but it's like having like kits, like, uh, like Lego kits or, or, yeah. or swords. Like you have like yeah. a structure, a platform, then you put like the body on top, they put the wheels, and, uh, and they can do that for all these 10 fabulous brands around the world. And Volkswagen, the, the brand here in the U.S. have invested in their Chattanooga plant, so I mean, it, as you say, it's, it's, a, it's a, a lot of work to just organize all those uh, logistics and like engineering and design and all that, right? Well, you can imagine from their perspective, they've got, again, all these brands within the Volkswagen Group, and they're trying to figure out the most cost-effective way to put them all together and have them share costs and make, make as much profit per vehicle as possible. And that's what they're doing now. They've got the, the plan in place. They're starting to execute. The new Golf is already in this new modular system. It's, uh, it's the... Uh, 
MQB is the name of that platform. I'm not even sure what that stands for, but that's like... It's something in German. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> try. Exactly, exactly. I'm sure I'd totally destroy and butcher the language if I tried. But it's that's like the lower end one. And then there's the MBD, uh, which is... Uh, no, wait, sorry, MQB, MDB, yeah, and then MSB. And those are kind of the three basic platforms. And the, the S is the more sporty one. The Q is the longitudinal, or sorry, is the is transverse mounted. And then the uh, D is the longitudinal. That's mean rear-wheel drive cars. Yeah. So that's really it. They only need those three platforms, and they can build almost anything off of them very cost. That's amazing. Yeah, when you yeah. think about, like, you, you're thinking about a Bugatti, you're thinking of a Lamborghini, you're thinking of an Audi A8. 911, our, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, but that's what they're going to do. And when you think about, again, the shared structure and the shared costs across, across all those brands and all those models, that's where they're going to make a lot of profit. And also the flexibility. Don't forget the flexibility because now they can produce multiple cars in a single plant. Yeah. Because the basic structures are so similar that it's not nearly as expensive for all the retooling to set the plants up. Yeah. And now with technology and engineering in factories, I mean, there can be amazing things done there. I remember I visited a uh, BMW plant in Dingolfing in Germany. And in the line assembly, they, uh, they, they can have a, a, a three series, a four series, a Rolls Royce body. Uh, I mean, different things. So I guess in theory, at least, I mean, we're not giving any announcement for Volkswagen. But like in Chattanooga, they, they can probably build Porsches. Yeah, exactly. And they can certainly build like, uh, you know, the small SUV that's front wheel drive that we know yeah. is coming, basically the Tiguan replacement. They'll be able to build that, you know, whether it's in Mexico or whether it's in Chattanooga or both or more one and then switch to the other at some point in the future. All of it becomes much more easy to do because of this groundwork that they're laying right now. Yeah. And uh, in North America in general, they're investing a lot. Also in uh, Mexico, Audi's uh, building a new plant for the Q5 to export to the whole world. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, new things coming out. And uh, Carl, I mean, Kelly Blue Book basically creates and a, a gathers information for the customer. So what does this mean for a customer that a big group such as Volkswagen is with 10 brands, incredible names, what does that mean for the customer? Is this it good or bad? Well, it's really good for the customer because it basically means that there's going to be a vehicle to fill almost every niche. Uh, and that's what Volkswagen wants to do is they want to have a lot of vehicles that go from, you know, the lowest priced small kind of hatchback all the way to the biggest luxury sedan and performance sports cars like an R8 or a 911 Turbo uh, or a 918, even uh, you know, their crazy yeah. hybrid sports cars. So they want to be able to produce every type of vehicle from top to bottom, and they want to be able to do it cost effectively. And, of course, if they're doing it cost effectively, then they can reduce the price that much more for uh, the customer. And they're also going to push the competition to have to work that much harder. And it's always the customer that wins when the car companies are building better products and driving each other to have to do better, which is really, I think, <laughs> we're in the best situation right now I've ever seen in terms of consumers benefiting from a hugely competitive market. Exactly. We are here at the lunch of the Chrysler 200, and we were talking about how nobody can afford to make a bad car. There's no bad cars anymore in the market. So at the end, the decisions for the customers might be a little bit difficult, but to pick something good. Yeah, yeah. Now the hardest part is figuring out which good car you want because they're all so good, you know, the, the, the vehicles that are being produced now versus those, the same version, you know. I mean, a good example might be the Chevrolet Impala. You know, there's a car that, that for a long time wasn't really considered much of a premium or desirable yeah. nameplate, and now the newest one from Chevrolet is tremendous. It's a, it's a fabulous vehicle, and we're seeing more and more of that where old vehicles that had a lot of weakness to them in the market are either being canceled or they're being fixed properly to where there's no weak, weak spots at all. Yeah. So okay, are you allowed to make a prediction? Uh, is Volkswagen really going to take over Toyota's number one spot? You know, I think I'd have to see Toyota's plan. I haven't seen Toyota's plan for the next, you know, five plus years like I have Volkswagen's. But based on what I've seen from Volkswagen, I'd have to feel like uh, the other big players out there, the two other big ones, of course, being Toyota and General Motors, better have stuff in place to get themselves, you know, cost effective and uh, global and flexible and efficient uh, to keep up because Volkswagen is going to be doing that over the next five plus years. Uh, we'll find out on calvinblog.com, right? Yeah, that's anyway. right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be reporting as soon as, uh, as soon as they tell us and we'll be looking to see, maybe get more information from some of the other big players soon. Well, thank you very much, Carl, for your, your time and uh, for sharing your experience in Germany with us. Yeah, thanks, Javier. Great thank talking. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.